Holy wow, I missed you. I'm back. Here's the final video. So this is all about eating this, not that, and learning about the foods that can be causing you to gain or retain belly fat. What I'm going to deliver you today is my secrets to success. It's the secret sauce that I'm also delivering in my belly fat guide um, that's going to help you turn on that fat burning system, learn how to get in tune with your body, your metabolism, what foods to eat, the right foods for your body type, and the foods that are going to actually make it easy to lose weight. Yes, I'm talking about eating for weight loss. I'm not talking about eating less or working out more. Heck no, I'm not talking about calories in versus calories out because if you've seen my last videos all week long, you'll know that I am not about the calories in versus calories out. So today you will not hear me say one thing from any of my recipes about how many calories there are or how many you should be eating. So I want to make sure that if you are with me, you give me some love, hearts, comments, let me know if you have questions about the foods that we're going to be talking about. So there's going to be three parts to this segment. The first part, I'm going to break down the five categories of food that your body absolutely needs right now is essential to your fat burning process and to revving up your metabolism. So if you're not eating these five foods, you are missing out. I'm also going to be revealing to you which foods can be wrecking havoc on your system and your metabolism causing inflammation, causing weight gain, and causing you to actually hold on to excess weight. So there's actually foods that you can be eating right now that seem healthy, but are actually doing your body a complete disservice. Just like if you're not eating enough, you could be actually killing and slowing down your metabolism long term. You might not notice it short term. The calories in versus calories out concept can work short term, but then you end up gaining the weight back. Why? Because your metabolism is a very smart machine inside of your body. And if you're not properly fueling it, it's going to slow down and go into starvation mode and be there long term. It won't rev up unless you do what I'm about to tell you. And the third part to this segment is things to reduce. And you might kill me for a couple things that I might talk about, but I really want to bring light to how it can be actually stimulating your nervous system and causing your body to go into stress mode, which not only wrecks havoc on your hormones and your metabolism, but can actually be causing that excess belly fat. So no matter how clean you eat or how much you work out, I promise you, you're still going to have it there unless you do these things. So we're going to talk about some recipes, but I need you to do me a huge favor. I hope you're jumping on. Maybe you're listening to this recording because I had to do a part two segment because the internet completely shut out, but I promise you these secrets are going to be something that are so essential to your success. So here's what I want you to do. If you can do me a huge favor and you have women in your life that you love and you care about, I want you to share this segment with them because the more hearts I get, the more comments I get from you, the more you show up, the more you share this, people will actually see this. If you don't show me some love and tell me that you're here and ask me any questions or comment that you're here, um, then nobody will see this and I'll be sad because I want to share this message and it's extremely powerful. All the secrets I'm revealing to you, you don't have to write down because I'm going to deliver them to you in a belly fat blasting guide. So if you want this written down in a format that you can have in your hands and apply immediately, um, just make sure you comment below and let me know that you want this guide. Um, and I'll give you the special link inside my little private community where I'm delivering it to everybody on Monday. So all week long, I'm delivering a ton of value. If you want to know what the heck I'm talking about, about living the her life, about the burn system, um, watch my video from Monday or even my transformation story where I was a little embarrassed to talk about um, but kind of reveal some secrets and stories about me a little bit more. Um, and let's talk food. Are you ready to dig in? Who's with me? Tell me you're with me. Show me you can hear me. Tell me that my internet is now working and everybody is going to start popping back on. 
you do matter to me. So if you are listening to the recording or you're seeing this later um, in a video format or on uh, social media, make sure that you're commenting to ask me the questions because I am going to dig back through and I will make sure that every single person that wants um, this free guide and wants everything in hard copy gets it. So here we go. It's Recipe Wednesday. It's my favorite time of week and we are talking food normally every Wednesday. I deliver you my favorite flat belly recipes, um, family style. I am no chef. I am what you call a short order cook. So what you are going to hear today are super simple recipes that you could do at home. You could probably even buy from the store. Um, and they're just really quick meal prep because I am a mom of going on three. That's number three right there. And, um, I'm the healthiest I have ever been. It's the healthiest pregnancy I've ever had. Um, a quick story about me is I struggled and battled with infertility, insulin resistance, figured out later it was PCOS, um, but basically struggled with weight and finding my healthy balance my entire life. That led to yo-yo dieting, unhealthy eating, um, really feeling kind of alone and having like a dark passenger with feeling unbalanced with my health, my fitness, and my weight. So I am on the other side of that and I am here to empower women to deliver you all the love and secrets and things that I didn't have when I was going through this. Um, so I want to give that to you. So we are going to kick this off. If you missed the intro, you can always go back. But again, if you guys are popping on like you are right now, this is part two because part one messed up. Um, so if you can share this with a friend that you care and love about because all this information is so essential to us feeling empowered and feeling ourselves again, you know that feeling where you just don't feel yourself, you feel fatigued, you feel tired, you have those sleepless nights, you get maybe anxiety, maybe depression, maybe you know you have some hormonal imbalance or issue. It could be thyroid, it could be PCOS, it could be perimenopause, it could be, um, that maybe you're going through menopause, maybe you feel like something's just not right in your body. 80% of women go undiagnosed or misdiagnosed with hormonal metabolism and weight issues. So you are not alone, my friend. I felt alone for a long time, um, and now I'm gonna help you fast forward your success. So let's talk all about food. You are all popping on right now, so please tell me. My connection is great. You're back with, with me. We're gonna dig right back into where we left off. All right, so here we go. So now I want to kind of flip the camera show you all this delicious foods that we have. So I've got some food here and we're going to talk about the foods right now that I want you to be adding in to your diet. Adding in. Yes, that's right. Adding in. The very first food that we're going to talk about, the whole foods that you want to add to your, to your diet. Now, here's a good rule of thumb. You ready? If it comes from the ground or has a mother, eat it. Okay. So food number one is legumes. So I just grabbed these, um, lentils, you could lentil soup, black beans. Those are all complex carbs and those actually help you, um, sustain your blood sugars. If you have blood sugar issues or insulin issues. Um, so complex carbs are really great for you because it's not going to spike your blood sugar. It's not going to spike your cortisol levels or your fat gaining, um, hormones like leptin, making you feel super hungry when you're not. So the first, one is legumes. So I just have this as a little example, but black beans, anything like that is great. Um, there's also number two is berries. So I just grabbed some um, organic things like berries. You want to buy organic. Why? Because they're grown in the ground. Things that you could peel like a banana or an orange. I don't necessarily think you need to buy organic because you're not eating the outside of it. So any fruits or vegetables that you're eating the outside of, you want to try to go organic, especially things like berries. Because if you're eating non-organic food and it's something like a berry, you're actually ingesting all of those pesticides, which is why they say buy organic when you can. But I personally feel like when you buy organic, it's only because you're eating the skin of whatever you're eating. That's what I buy organic. Is that a good rule of thumb? Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Meats. So if we're talking meat, you want to get organic meat because if meat is being in uh, shot up with hormones, growth hormones, 
What do you think is happening to your body when you ingest that meat with the growth hormone? Those growth hormones are going inside you. And not only is it going to throw off your chemical balance, but it's going to make you grow fat, just like the animals, which is why we say, especially with me, try to go organic as often as you can. Yay, you guys are with me. Okay, I was saying, you got to show me love. You got to give me comments. You got to share this with a friend because otherwise nobody will see this and I will not know that you're with me and that you jumped back on to part two. I also want your questions. So when I dig into food and I reveal some dirty secrets, ask me anything. Okay, third. So we got one, legumes. We got two, berries. Three is high fiber veggies. So high fiber veggies, the best type, what are the best type? Broccoli is a great high fiber veggie. Um, so is zucchini. So I would eat the skin on this so I get organic. I eat the skin on this so I get organic. Um, there is also kale, which is a great green, also high in iron. Um, a lot of women suffer from iron deficiencies, so eating greens like kale, spinach, um, even beets are super high in iron, not just meat. Um, cauliflower is actually really high in fiber. This is fun. Have you guys heard about rice cauliflower? You can make a recipe with this. Is like a fried rice. I've actually it on my YouTube. There's a, a recipe for fried rice, and it's basically using cauliflower. So you're skipping on the simple carbohydrates that spike your blood sugar, which is AKA white rice, and you're replacing it with something that's high fiber, that's gonna sustain your blood sugar and turn your body into a fat burning machine. So that's category number three, is those high fiber veggies. Um, what did I miss? Collard greens is also great. Now I want to dive into nuts and seeds. So this is actually just a little, these are raw nuts. Um, raw is a little bit better because when they're roasted or they're salted, do you know what that means? When they roast them, anybody? Do you prefer roasted or do you prefer salted? Or do you prefer raw? Or do you prefer it all? Tell me. Raw or roasted? Do you know the difference? I'm about to tell you. So when you get raw, it's basically the purest form that the nut can come in. It's not changing the chemical um, compound of, I know both are good, right, Jen? Um, of the nut. When you roast it, it actually changes the fat property, turning it from a good fat to a bad fat. Um, yes, there is dried fruit in here, which dried fruit is not always the best, but I just love the combination of a little chewy and a little raw nut, and I feel like a little in moderation is not going to hurt you, um, but dried fruit does have sugar, and I'm going to talk about dried fruit in a second when I talk about your snacks and some little go-to things, um, but I actually get these at Trader Joe's. I love them because they're pre-portioned, right, so I'm not eating the whole bag. Any fat becomes a bad fat when uh, you eat excess amounts, right? Okay, so then let's talk about, so that was category number four, what to add in is your nuts and your seeds. Category number five, and remember, if you want this info, you're jumping in late, I've got a guide for you. Don't write it down, just comment below and let me know you need my guide. Um, number five is good carbs. What the heck are good carbs? This is my favorite category, especially having this right now. I like carbs. So you wanna eat the good carbs because when you eat the bad carbs, what does it do? It's spiking your blood sugar, your insulin. It's making you gain and retain more fat, especially for me. Some people can handle carbs. My body does not do well with simple carbs. It's like you go off track, my body will go a little bit crazy. Everybody's body is different, but for me, it's not great. So here's what I do to still get my carbs, but to pick the right carbs. So the first one is quinoa. I love me a quinoa salad. So veggies, corn, black beans. Um, did you know that quinoa is actually the only complete protein source with nine essential amino acids? So it's just like having meat. So if you're vegetarian or you're trying to kind of cut down on the amount of meat that you're eating, quinoa is actually a perfect protein uh, replacement. But remember, it's a complex carb too. So it's treated as a carbohydrate, but it's also giving you a great source of protein. So quinoa typically comes like this. You'll get it, Jen. Quinoa comes like this. It looks like this is like a tri-colored. Sometimes it's just like that 
white looking color, sometimes it's red. There's different colors of quinoa. It doesn't matter what color you get. Um, it cooks like rice. This is an organic quinoa. You wanna make sure you rinse it. I treat it just like rice. It's one part quinoa, two parts liquid. If you cook it in um, like vegetable broth or chicken broth, it's gonna soak up the flavors of that broth. Um, and then what I love to do, I love it because it's a super simple base. Quinoa can actually kind of be treated like an oatmeal. So if you add um, almond milk after you cook it, you add almond milk um, in the morning to it, it tastes just like, and maybe like some fresh berries on top. That's a really great high protein breakfast meal that's gonna satisfy you for a really long time. Every meal that you eat should be satisfying you for about three to four hours. If it's not, it's probably because you need to check your balance of protein, fats, and carbohydrates. If you're getting super hungry with those Fruit Loops behind me, I guarantee that that is not only gonna hear me. Connection is back, are we good? Are we good, are you guys still with me? Show me you're with me, you gotta give me a little heart, you gotta give me a little love. That right there though will make you super hungry within probably an hour because, oh thank you, good, you're here, um, because it's going to um, spike the blood sugar, spike your leptin, hunger hormone, which makes you feel like, oh my God, I'm hungry, I didn't eat, even though you might have probably more calories eating that than you would eating like an oatmeal or a quinoa style oatmeal breakfast or eggs or one of those options. Um, so we talk good carbohydrates. The other carbohydrate I want to talk about is uh, sweet potato is a great carbohydrate. So inside here, I added kind of some uh, zucchini, which is one of your high fiber veggies, a little bit of um, sweet potato. Sometimes I'll do more like a Mexican style where I'll do black beans, corn, um, tomatoes, and then I'll make my own vinaigrette with a little fresh lime, a little bit of olive oil. Um, so you get that citrus that actually helps rev up your metabolism too. So here is the part I know you guys want to talk about. Okay, so we got all this food, right? So now I want to talk about like some prepackaged foods. I want to talk about some fats. I want to talk about chocolate. I want to talk about coconut oil. I want to talk about like breads. I want to talk about chips and your coffee creamer and yogurt and bars. Does that sound good? Does that sound good to you? What questions do you have about the foods that I just showed you? Anything so far? I'm gonna dive into these comments. So what I want you to do is think about some, um, you're gonna think about some in foods that maybe can be wrecking havoc. That's what I'm gonna jump into. Then I'll go back to my secrets about fats. Um, so inflammatory foods that you should remove, I'm about to show you. Why? Have you heard of leaky gut? It's a crazy trend that's happening to just about everybody. You know that bloating that you feel? You know how you feel like you have that extra layer of fat that you just can't get off of your body? That can be caused from leaky guts, that's caused from inflammatory foods, and that is caused from foods that are literally going inside your body, killing your digestive enzymes, messing with your metabolism, and making you hold on to belly fat. But don't be sad because there's ways to fix it. So what happens when you're having inflammatory foods is you're not able to properly digest the nutrients, right? Um, it messes with your hormone balance and it also messes with your ability to actually burn fat. So your body is focusing on getting rid of these toxins versus burning fat. So I'm gonna tell you about some of these foods and it's also in your guide. So one of them right here is hydrogenated fats, high fructose corn syrup, artificial sweeteners, and gluten and dairy. I know, right? All right, so here's one. Let's just dig into gluten. So bread, so you might be like, I love bread. So do I. But you can get either a gluten-free bread or high fiber breads. When you look at these ingredients, when you see enriched and you see stuff that you can't pronounce, it's probably not great for you. So things like these packaged um, breads are not the best. Now, hydrogenated fats. I don't even know where the ingredients are on this. This basically is a hydrogenated fat. Your body does not know what the heck it is. 
so is this hydrogenated fat, fake sugars that are gonna, again, inhibit your ability to burn that belly fat. Um, chips replacement, I love these root veggies. I can actually read the ingredients. They're sweet potato, um, all sorts of little veggies that you um, can actually have, right? Let's talk a little bit about chocolate. Chocolate, love chocolate. Chocolate in moderation is not horrible for you, but when you get into the artificial sweeteners, I would pick something more like this, like a 100% dark chocolate. This is one of my favorite little treats. Let's talk bars. If you cannot read the ingredients, don't buy it. This is actually a good bar that I'll buy as like a little meal replacement or substitute. If I'm having eggs in the morning, Tomatoes, salsa is a great way to add as a topping if you want to talk toppings. Um, if you want to talk a little snack, what the heck is it? Uh, I said no dairy, right? So 0% um, Greek yogurt is not horrible, but it's when you start adding all those fake sugars in that it becomes not so awesome for you. Um, a meal that I love when I'm craving carbs is to throw together a gluten-free waffle, which is obviously not like 100% organic or awesome for you, but if I'm craving bread, I'll go for a gluten-free, I'll go for a little almond butter, which is a good fat, and then I'll throw on some berries on top so it gives it a little bit of crunch. So let's talk um, fats. So we're going to talk fats really quick. All right, I'm doing a live video. Jill, 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 live video right now. All right, sorry about that. We got grandma coming in, so it's an awesome time. So we are going to do uh, talking a little bit about um, fats. So I have a little secret tip for you. So we have um, coconut oil. So if you've heard the buzz about coconut oil, coconut oil provides the necessary building blocks for hormone production. So this is actually great for your hormones and it also assists with weight loss. It reduces inflammation and it has micro antibacterial properties and more that are going to help your body. Another good option if you're a milk lover is like almond milk. Um, I would stay away if possible from soy milk because soy milk is highly processed. Um, so fermented soy is actually good if you've ever had fermented soy, but when you get into like the process of like soy milk, that really can mess with your hormone production. So we kind of try to do that. I used to love soy milk because it was a big buzz, but then I switched it over to almond milk. Now they have cashew milk, which is really great, lower in calories. But again, remember, we don't count calories. Um, what else do I love for fat? Avocado. Now, last but not least, Let's talk some salads to make your life a little easier. These are actually some good ones um, that I like because it's got that high fiber like spinach, kale. It's got all those good nutrients. There's quinoa in here, which is why there's no meat because quinoa is your complete protein source, your edamame, pumpkin seeds. The only thing that you want to be weary of would be the dress. So when you can't pronounce what the heck's in your dressing, and it's got all those hydrogenated fats and oils that we talked about, that's when it messes with the fat burning process. So last but not least, what are we talking reduce? We're talking alcohol, we're talking caffeine, we're talking excess soy. I know I said caffeine. I'm gonna tell you why in just a second. And we are talking about fatty meats. So those are things that you want to reduce. The other things I talked about are more removing. So why, let's just say caffeine. Why caffeine? So remember when I mentioned that caffeine is a stimulant. So even one cup a day can actually wreak havoc on your nervous system and it increases your cortisol levels. They do say that, you know, have a cup of coffee and it's gonna help with your workout and it's gonna help with the fat burning process, but just be aware that it's a stimulant. So it's actually putting stress on your body. So what does, as women, what does our hormone system do? It goes into stress mode, which makes you hold on to a little extra belly fat. So. Inside this free guide that I'm going to give you if you comment below because you want it. 
um, I talk to you about how it stresses your adrenals and I give you a replacement. It actually can break down magnesium that helps with muscle repair, messes with your natural acid and gut bacteria causing the bloating and the belly fat and extra stress inhibiting your belly, your ability to burn fat. They have this matcha green tea. Um, this is actually with water. Matcha is a slow release caffeine. Green tea, slow release caffeine. So it doesn't cause that crazy stress and that little rush that you get um, with coffee. So you still get your caffeine. But what I love, and even Starbucks has it, is a coconut milk matcha green tea latte. Just skip all the sweeteners that are inside of it. Order that, it's so delicious, it's great for your body, and it's a perfect coffee alternative. So if you feel like, you know what? I drink like three cups a day, and then in the afternoon, I need another cup. Just try to replace one. I'm not saying like just cut it out completely, but just like you're limiting your alcohol intake, you are gonna try to limit the amount of things that are causing stress on your hormone production system because it's stressing your adrenals and it's doing things on the inside of your body that are so hard to reverse. But I'm gonna make that super simple for you. So make sure that you ask me any questions that I missed below about the five foods that you must add to your diet to start burning more fat. The foods that are also causing inflammation that you should start to remove. And then I also gave you those foods that you want to start to reduce. I mean, let's be real. Having a glass of wine, enjoying life, being out with friends, this is the lifestyle. So I'm not here to claim any type of perfection going on. I'm here to say have more balance, bring more awareness, and know what to add in so you can start resetting your metabolism, reset that hormone system that can actually be causing stress on your body, making you hold on to that extra belly fat, and try these foods and those recipes that I talked about so that you can start turning your body into a fat burning machine right away. Any questions, comment below. You want this guide so you don't have to write it down or rewind the video, comment below. And if you have a friend that you know that can benefit from this, please make sure that you share it so that we can reach and empower as many women as possible. That's my mission. My mission is to upgrade lives. My mission is to empower women. And my mission is to help you fast forward your success so you never feel alone again on your journey. So thank you for watching this. Thanks for tuning in. You catch the replay. I'm still going to go through all those comments all day. And remember, all week long, I'm delivering free value. Yesterday was my transformation story. Monday was my big reveal. Tomorrow, I'm going to dig more into recipes and flat belly foods, detox, um, anything that you want, I'm going to answer. So get in my inside private community, comment below, and I'll make sure that you get added. Thanks, you guys, and happy recipe Wednesday.